Hello, this is FarmingMori7, and this is part one of my video series. I'm calling this a beginner's guide to sorcery. Um, I decided to uh, make a guide on this because there was a couple... I actually had a couple people ask me, you know, how I uh, <laughs> uh, got to where I was. This is, this is actually more of a guide on... Uh, how to twink out your character. Uh, for those of you who are unfamiliar with the World of Warcraft games, basically, what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to get, you know, the, the best, you know, kind of gear and uh, spells and uh, stuff like that as you can while keeping your the level of your character at a minimum so that uh, you're like, you, you usually stop... Uh, at a level ending with 9, like you'd stop at level 9, or 19, or 29, or something like that. And, um, uh, <clears throat> you would stop leveling up your character at that point, and then you would, uh, uh, yeah, continue, uh, getting, you know, collecting gear and stuff like that, so that when you face off against somebody, you're basically in the same tier as them, in the same level bracket, but you have way better stuff. So, that's basically what this video is going to show you. Now, it is called a beginner's guide. So, obviously, I'm going to speak as if, <clears throat> you know, this is like your first time playing. So, I'm going to include little uh, buttons, little annotations during, during in the video that you can click when I'm about to explain something that you might already know. So you can just click that and you can skip ahead to the next part of the video. <coughs> so, let's get started. So, start a new game. <coughs> now, since this is a Mage. I want her to be named after Beatrice, because this, this is going to be, you know, <coughs> I'm going to try to make her look like Beatrice too. For sex, you can pick whatever you want. Uh, class, I'm obviously going to pick Sorcerer. That's what you're going to do. Now, the gift needs to be the master key. So whatever happens, you need to make the gift always master key. Uh, physique can be whatever you want. I'm just gonna pick very slim. Doesn't really matter for physique. Doesn't matter. <clears throat> Basically, the only thing that matters is class, sorcerer, and gift master key. Um. So, basically, that's basically, uh... You know, I, sh I probably shouldn't put too much time into this. We'll just keep it at that. Okay. And then when you're done, click accept. Remember how, now I'm going to go over the Northern Undead Asylum. Now, <clears throat> I'm not going to play through the cutscene. I'm going to skip over the cutscene. I'm going to skip over this the cutscene as well. Now, if you already know everything about Northern Undead Asylum, there's really nothing special you need to do. So you can just skip over this right now and, you know, get to Firelink Shrine. Uh, if you are willing to watch this, uh, this is the perfect opportunity to experiment with the buttons. Um, uh, depending on what console you're playing on. I'm doing Xbox 360. So... When I say the name of a button, it's going to be on the in the Xbox 360 language. You can just translate that to whatever you're playing. Um, uh, you will notice that in the uh, bottom left, bottom right, bottom left corner, there's a soul arrow spell, but you won't be able to use it yet because you don't have a catalyst. Uh, catalyst is a special type of weapon used to 
casts spells, and if you don't have, if you if you're not holding a catalyst at the moment, you won't be able to cast any spells. You'll get a catalyst later on. Make sure you read these messages if you don't know what everything is. RB is to attack. Now, I'm going to play through this game kind of like a. I don't know how to describe this other than using the phrase dedicated spellcaster. Um, I don't use uh, melee weapons. And, um, and as you play through this game as a sorcerer, you're not going to be using very many melee weapons either. Because you're not going to put any of your points in the strength stat. You're going to put all your points in intelligence and attunement and uh, stuff like that. But for now, since the melee weapons are the only ones I'm using, that's that's the melee weapons is all I have, that's what I'll use. But once I get my catalyst, I'm only going to use spells. Make sure you get into the habit of uh, uh, locking on to enemies before you attack by clicking down the right stick. Uh, if you're a melee fighter, Locking on might not be very important, but if you're a spellcaster, locking on to your enemies is the most important thing you can do. Okay. Now, if this is your first time playing, you will notice that there's an attuned magic option, and then there's a whole bunch of stuff here that looks weird. Um, you won't be able to do anything with this. You won't be able to do anything with this until you get at least one other spell. Attune magic. Attune, um, attune is basically just a fancy way of saying equip. Um, when you acquire a spell in the game, you won't be able to use it unless you equip it first. Make sure you run through here as fast as you can to this gate, because you don't want to fight this guy. That guy. He's crazy. Um, you have to attune it before you can use it. After you let, light a bonfire, it's um, it's a good idea to sit at it. That way, uh, that way it saves your progress. When you die, you lose all of your. Uh, when you die, you you lose all of your. Experience and and uh, and humanity, and you respawn at the bonfire you last rested at. So, <clears throat> as you're progressing through the game, it's it's a good idea to sit at a bonfire after you light it, even if you don't think you need it. It's always a good idea to do that. Okay, so after you acquire your shield, you're gonna press the start button. Notice that there is no pause feature in this game. Press start. Go to change equipment. Go down to the shield column, which is basically your left hand. Uh, you have fists in there right now, but if you press A, you can equip the shield right there. So now that the shield is equipped, uh, you can press left on the D-pad to switch between your two left-handed weapons. I only have one weapon equipped in my left hand right now, so pressing it again just changes me back to fists. I'm gonna want my shield, and to block with the shield, you have to hold down the left bumper. Hold down the left bumper to block. And you can move around, and you can even sprint while you're blocking. So that's how you're gonna be able to block this guy's arrows. Now when you get up here, you can pillage this course and get your dagger. And to equip the dagger, it's basically the same thing as, as your other one. Now, I'm going to put my dagger in the... I'm going to replace my straight sword hilt with my dagger. So I'm going to click on straight sword, sword hilt, and then I'll click on dagger. Now I'm using a better weapon. It has much better stats. There we go. Traverse the white light. <coughs> I 
Uh, is there anything over here? I keep forgetting, no. Oh yeah, there is, but I won't be able to get that till later. You won't be able to get that until later. Now, as you go up here, be careful because there's a there's a, a boulder that's gonna roll down and try to smash you. Okay. There we go. And there was the boulder. Talk to this guy. I'm not going to go through all of his uh his aunt, his dialogue. Press yes when you have the option to press yes. And he'll give you five Estus flask. And, and a key. And you need both. You need both. So we're just gonna go down here. I have no idea what happened there. Okay, alright. So, rest at this bonfire. Remember, we can't really do anything with the attune magic option right now. Pretty soon we're going to get our catalyst and then we'll be able to cast spells. Now the Estus Flask, to use your Estus Flask you press the X button. Or whatever button it is on your, on the control that you have. Alright. We'll be able to use our special key to open that gate. Kick and jump attack, yeah. Ah, as a spellcaster, you're fighting more from long range. So, you won't be using very many of those other things. Now, here it is. Here is your Sorcerer's Catalyst, the weapon that you're going to be using from now on. So, before you continue, because there's enemies around the corner right there, you're going to want to go to change equipment, go to your right hand. You can go to the other one that's not equipped with the dagger. Um, I'm just going to replace my dagger with the Catalyst, because I, I really don't need the dagger. I don't like it. So, after you equip your Sorcerer's Catalyst, you'll notice that the soul, soul Arrow option is illuminated. You can cast it now. And to cast it, you press the right bumper. And that casts the Soul Arrow. Now, you'll notice that there is no mana bar in this game. You don't have mana. Um, each of your spells, you only have a limited number of use casts for those spells. Okay, I got uh, a little trouble there. I shouldn't have went out. Okay, you only have a certain amount of times you can cast each particular spell. Um, usually the rule of thumb is uh, spells that have uh, <coughs> a higher number of casts are generally weaker. Spells that have a lower number of casts are generally stronger. The more powerful spells have fewer casts. You can only cast them a few times before they run out. And in order to refill your spells, uh, you have to go to a bonfire. Resting at a bonfire will replenish all of your spells, and it'll also replenish all of your Estus flasks if you use them. In fact, I can show you right now. I'll drink an Estus flask. So now I'm down to four Estus flasks left, and 25 soul arrows. So I'm going to go down and rest at the bonfire. Hold on, just one minute. So now you can see that uh, my soul, er soul arrows are fully, fully replenished, and my Estus flask have, are also fully replenished. So that's how that is. So now let's go back. <clears throat> um. So now, and, and now also remember that when you rest at a bonfire, it also respawns all the enemies, except for bosses and mini bosses. Bosses and mini bosses don't respawn, uh, but. Almost all other enemies respawn when you uh, rest at a bonfire. So now, here's a guy. Keep up your shield, lock on him, and cast a soul arrow. <clears throat> Notice that he died in one hit. 
Um, spells are actually very powerful. Um, that's one of the reasons, that's actually one of the reasons why they have such a limited number of uses, is because they're so powerful. Um, <coughs> uh, also, again, it's also, you also need to keep in mind that you need to lock on the enemy before you cast. If I don't lock on, and I press the RB button to cast the soul arrow, nothing will happen. It, it'll, it'll be in completely the wrong spot. So I need to lock on him. Make sure that little circle is on him and then lock on. <coughs> Here's another thing. This guy that's shooting arrows at you and you have your shield up and you're blocking him. Uh, you need to time your soul arrow. Um, wait until immediately after the arrow hits your shield and then attack him. And keep your shield button held down the entire time so that your shield is up. If your shield is down, you won't be able to, uh, hit him. Now, here's a little bit of a challenge. This guy right here. He's going to take a few hits. Got 80 for that. <clears throat> now... Remember that you can also use your catalyst as a melee weapon. Press the right trigger while you're holding the catalyst and you'll swing it like a melee weapon. It will not do very much damage at all. It'll almost do no damage. Um, your best bet with using the catalyst is using it to fire soul arrows. Now before you... Now before you drop down there, it's best if you drink from your Estus Flask by pressing the button. If you don't have any Estus Flasks equipped, what you're going to do is you're going to... Oh God. Whoops. Oh. oh well, looks like I have to fight him now. Well, I guess that'll just have to wait for later. Okay. Make sure you always keep your distance from him. You're a mage, not a melee fighter. So make sure you keep your distance and roll out of the way when he attacks. Alright, and that's it. <clears throat> Defeated him. Feel free to drink from an, an from an Estus flask when you ever you want. And you gained one humanity just by killing him. So that's pretty cool. So now we're going to open the door, use the big pilgrim's key. Open the gate. Now there is there is an item around here somewhere. Can't remember where it was. There's like an item that you can get. Can't remember. Yeah, there was an, there was an item around here that you can get somewhere. Oh well. Alright, just go on up here and meet me at Firelink Shrine. I'm gonna skip over all this stuff. Okay, and then it says in Ordran, level up and kindle at bonfires. So... Here's your first prompt to level up. Um, now, before you put any points in any stats, I would suggest that you don't do that just yet. You're going to need your experience points to buy some pretty important uh, spells that you obviously are going to need. Now, obviously, you're, you are going to want to rest at the bonfire, which will increase your uh, 
which will replenish your soul arrows, and as you can see, it gets your Estus flasks all the way up to plus 10. Now, you have a level up option, um, and uh, by the way, you can skip all of this. If you want to skip all of this explanation and move on to the next uh, part of the video, just click the button right there on the screen, and you can do that. Okay, I'm back. So, <clears throat> basically, um, you can level up if you want. I would advise against that. Um, but, um, f just um, as a friendly reminder for when you do decide to level up, here is a rundown on the stats. <clears throat> so, basically, um, if you choose the level up option, there's a whole bunch of stats that you can level up. Uh, if you press the back button, you can go to basically anything on the board, and it'll give you a, a very short one-sentence explanation of all of these things. And, um, these, ex these explanations are okay. Uh, basically, uh, what you need to know is that the stats that you can level up in are these ones. Vitality, Attunement, Endurance, Strength, Dexterity, Resistance, Intelligence, and Faith. Now, when you play the game, no matter what character you're playing as, uh, the best way to go about it is to pick one or two stats and then stick with leveling those up. Uh, if you try to uh, do all of your stats evenly, so that they're kind of spread out all the way around, your character is not going to be very good, especially uh, when it comes to something like PvP, player versus player, where you're uh, you're fighting against uh, other characters, other player characters. You're going to want to pick two stats, maybe three stats, and then stick with them. Um, <clears throat> As a mage, the stats that you're going to be putting most of your points in are Intelligence and Attunement. Um, intelligence is... Uh, it, intelligence uh, governs the uh, power of your sorceries. Um, there are basically... Um, it's, it's kind of actually a little bit confusing because there are actually three types of spells in this game. There's sorceries, there's pyromancies, and there's miracles. Each of those three types of spells uses a different stat, and they also each um, uh, use different types of weapons catalysts in order to cast those types of spells. Intelligence only deals with sorcery type spells. Um, sorceries are spells that you can cast from catalysts, uh, miracles you can cast from talismans, and pyromancies uh, you can cast from pyromancy gloves. The thing about pyromancies, pyromancies are neat because pyromancies don't require you to level up a, a particular stat in order to uh, become more powerful with them. So basically, anyone, no matter what character you are, you can use pyromancies. Uh, but your main stat is going to be intelligence. Intelligence increases the uh, power of your uh, sorceries. Now, the <clears throat> amount of power increase that you get from putting one point in intelligence um, gets lower and lower as your intelligence get higher and higher. That's called diminishing returns. Basically, what that means is, uh, see how my intelligence is at level 15 right now? Well, if I were to increase my intelligence by one point, uh, I would get a considerable uh, boost in uh, spell power. However, if my intelligence were already at level f uh, 45, and then I increased it to level 46, uh, my increase in spell power would not be as much. Um, the spell power would increase by a, a tiny, might increase by a tiny, tiny bit, but it wouldn't increase. It wouldn't. It wouldn't be that big of an increase. Uh, that is diminishing returns. All of these stats. Uh, possess some type of diminishing return on them. When the, st when the stat is lower, you get a bigger increase from putting a point in it. When the stat is already higher, uh, you don't get as much of an increase from putting a point in that stat. The other stat you need to worry about is attunement. 
Now, if you were to put uh, one point in attunement, that would increase your attunement slots from three to four. Um, if you remember from earlier, um, depending on whether you skipped over that part of the video or not, uh, attunement uh, <coughs> is just... <laughs> Uh, when you attune a, st uh, a spell, that's basically just a fancy way of saying that you're equipping it. Whenever you acquire a new spell in the game, it sits in your inventory and you can't really do anything with it. In order to use the spell, you have to sit at a bonfire and attune the spell. You have to go to your attune magic option and place that spell inside of an attunement slot. If you look right here, this, uh, this soul arrow spell is in an attunement slot right now. There you go. There's your attunement slots right here. Um, uh, I have three attunement slots right now, but if I were to put one point in attunement, I would have four attunement slots. Um, see, if I were to put one point in attunement to get my attunement from 15 to 16, my attunement slots would increase from three to four. Whenever you are about to increase one of your stats, uh, the changes that would happen are shown in blue. Uh, so that's what it is. Now, just to round down some of the other stats, uh, there's Vitality. Vitality is, um, it just gives you more health. Uh, so you, as you can see, if I put, if I increased my Vitality from 8 to 9, then I would have 552 HP instead of 531. Uh, so that's what vitality is. Uh, endurance increases your equip load, your max equip load, and your stamina. Equip load is the weight of basically uh, uh, everything that you're wearing. Uh, that's all your armor and all your weapons. Um, those things contribute to your equip load. Um, now your max equip load is right here shown on the screen. That's the maximum amount of stuff you can carry on your person until you start to uh, uh, suffer. Uh, it is possible to wear heavier stuff than your equip load will allow. It is possible to do that. You can wear whatever you want, but your mobility will be severely hampered. Uh, you won't be able to use certain types of attacks. And... Um, yeah, it's just a bad situation. You don't want to go over your max equip load. Strength. Strength is one of the attack stats. It increases the attack power of melee weapons. Um, keep in mind that some melee weapons scale off of uh, dexterity. Scale more off of dexterity than strength. But strength is the primary stat for melee weapons. Dexterity increases the uh, damage that you can do with uh, bows and arrows. It also, um, um, increases, uh, uh, your, uh, uh, spell casting speed, but the spell, c the spell casting speed, um, from dexterity is very small, and you also won't be able to see that change until you get to about level 35 or 40. Um, until you get to, uh, uh, I mean, uh, 35 or 40 dexterity, not level 35, sorry about that. Uh, but until you get 35 dexterity, at least, um, there won't be any change in spell casting speed. So, for those of you who are thinking, I should put points in dexterity for the spell casting speed, no you should not. Um, it's really not worth it. It's not worth putting the points in dexterity just for the speed, because the casting speed only increases the speed by a fraction of a second and you have to have a ton of points in dexterity in order for that to happen. Uh, the spell casting speed is a nice side benefit to having dexterity but in my opinion it's it's not a good enough reason to base to base your reasoning solely on that to put points in dexterity. So if you're playing as a, a sorcerer dexterity stay away from it. Resistance um, everyone kind of agrees that resistance is one of those stats that you should stay away from because it doesn't increase anything that the other stats don't already increase. Resistance uh, increases your resistance to physical, magic, flame, and lightning defense, and it also increases your resistance to poison, as you can see.
Uh, however, almost every other stat uh, that you can increase increases your resistance to physical magic, flame, and lightning as well. I mean, every every stat that you put points in, it always increases your uh, defenses by a slight by a small amount. So you d shouldn't really put any points of resistance. Uh, faith. <coughs> Faith is the fourth and final uh, main attack stat. Faith increases the uh, power of your miracles. Uh, <coughs> now, in this game, there aren't... Uh, 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 most of the miracles you'll encounter in this game are, are either defensive or supportive. Um, there are a few offensive miracles, but... Uh, uh, for the offensive miracles, faith increases the power of those uh, miracles. In order to cast miracles, you need to have a special weapon called a talisman, and you need to be holding the talisman in order to cast the miracle. It's not like the miracles are not like sorceries and pyromancies because you need a different type of weapon to cast them. <coughs> you, as a sorcerer, are not going to put any points in faith unless you're having an int slash faith stat, um, which I actually. Um, I'm working on on one of my other characters right now. It's pretty fun if you ever get a chance to do it. But right for now, you don't need to put any points in faith. <coughs> and also, you need to keep in mind that every time you put a point in a particular stat, uh, you have to pay a certain amount of souls. Um, souls are used as experience points. And instead of using the phrase experience points, they use the word souls to describe it. It's basically all the same thing. Uh, but in addition to providing uh, experience points to level up your stats, the souls also are used as currency for the merchants. And whenever you want to buy something, you have to, you have to pay with experience points. Uh, there's no money in this game. All the money is basically souls. So, and every time you put a point in a stat, the number of souls that you need to put up another point and another stat increases. So right now, in order to get me from level 3 to level 4, I have to pay 707 souls. From level 4 to level 5, I have to pay 724 souls. And it keeps getting higher and higher as you, uh, as you put more points in more stats. For now, I'm not going to put any points in any stats, because... Uh, <coughs> uh, there was something I uh, wanted to... Uh, by uh, there are some uh, there are a couple powerful spells that you must have. <laughs> uh, it's kind of a must. Um, you'll find that uh, your soul arrows start to deplete after a while, so you're gonna want them. Uh, but before I tell you that, uh, I'm just going to finish up by talking about the Kindle and the Reverse Hollowing option. Um, you have a humanity in your inventory. If you were to leave the bonfire, go to your inventory and go to uh, brow uh, browse and use items. The first one is your uh, usable items. And this is a humanity. Uh, you can use it if you like. Uh, I don't recommend that you use it because if you die, you lo lose the humanity and then you'll have to go back to where you died to pick it back up. Uh, uh, but once you use a humanity, the number in the upper left hand corner will change from 0 to 1 meaning that you'll have one humanity uh, available for you and then once you have that you can either use it to kindle the bonfire or you can use it to reverse your hollowing and become human um, if you're a beginner you've never played this game before or you've only played it for a, a little bit um, I would suggest that you not choose the reverse hollowing option because when you are human um, you'll be able to be invaded by other players without your permission <laughs> uh, players can just invade your world uh, uh, whenever they want um, there are certain areas that are off limits to PvP like Firelink Shrine for example um, but um, uh, in most places, you will be. If you are human, you can be invaded by someone, unless 
you defeat the area boss first. So, I'm just going to keep myself like this because we have a little sightseeing to do. Um, now, I'm going to show you um, some amazing uh, sorcerer gear uh, that we're going to need. Um, that we're going to use. Um, uh, but first, before we get this, it's the crimson robe. Now, if you already know where and how to get the crimson robe from here, you can just skip over um, the next part of the video, and you can uh, get the crimson robe yourself. But if you don't know where it is or how to get it, I'm going to show you. But first, before we go there, we're going to grab some of these items. Walk around to each of these items and grab the humanities. <clears throat> okay, so we got uh, that. We're gonna go over here, we're gonna get some more stuff. Pillage corpse. There's six firebombs. Those firebombs actually will come in handy later when we fight Apple the Rock. Don't worry, we're not gonna do that right now. We got, we still got some more errands to run. Let's go in here. Past this guy. You can talk to him if you want. Um, you don't really have to do that right now. I'm just gonna skip over that for now. Soul of a Lost Undead. As you play through the game, you'll find souls on the ground. Um... These are a little different from the souls that you collect. Not that much different, but, um... Basically, these souls are not added to your, uh... Uh... These souls are not added to your... Inventory Im added to your soul count immediately. They're just put into your inventory as usable items. And to use them, you go browse and use items. Go soul of a lost undead, and then you can use it right here. I'm not going to use it right now, because I don't want to risk dying. I don't want to use that until after I have done everything I want to do. You're going to go up to this area, and you're going to drop down any one of these holes. It's not a bottomless pit, don't worry. After you drop down, you'll be able to walk through here and open these chests. Homeward Bone. These Homeward Bones are really important. Make sure you get the Homeward Bones. Morning Star Talisman. And a Cracked Red Eye Orb. Now you'll notice that one of those items was a talisman. If you go s go over to your weapon menu, you'll see that the talisman is right here. Th this is a special type of weapon used to cast miracles. Um, more than likely you don't have the stats to use this weapon right now, but um, you will. Uh, well, I don't know if you will, but... Um, uh, if you want to cast miracles, you, you'll have to put more a little bit more points in faith, and you're gonna have to have a little bit more points in uh, uh, strength in order to cast the miracles. Also, you remember you'll get you also got a homeward bone. The homeward bone will be able to immediately transport you to the last bonfire you rested at. Bleeds talisman. Okay. After you drop down here, you'll be ambushed by some skeletons. So. This is a good chance to try out your soul, soul arrows and uh, make sure you always moving backward and repeatedly pressing the soul arrow button. If they run up to you, you can move backward or you can try to uh, roll backward. Oh, this is taking a long time, isn't it? Yes, it is. This will be a lot better once you acquire the more powerful spells. Okay, perfect. Now that he's taken care of, we're going to go up here. We're going to go all the way around. 
And there's another item up here. We'll get that. Soul of a Lost Undead. Don't use it just yet. Uh, save it for later. Okay, we're gonna sit at the bonfire, and now it's time to get those spells that we've been talking about. So, this is how you do it. You're gonna go past this guy, down the stairs. Now, if you already know where they are, uh, you can just skip over this vid part of the video. And you can skip right ahead, right to um, getting the crimson uh, robe outfit. Open that gate if you haven't done it already. And go down the uh, elevator. Now once you get down here, you'll notice that there are a number of... Uh, make sure you get this corpse and the soul. Once you get down here, you'll notice that there are a number of zombie things. They won't attack you. You can attack them if you want. If you attack them, they'll attack you. But they're not really... They're not, they're not a threat to you right now. After you get down those stairs, you're going to go over here. Next to this guy that's laying down. Down these stairs. Talk to this guy. I'm not going to go through all of these dialogue options. Um, then you have to talk to him again. And then go down to purchase item. And here are the other souls. There's soul arrow and there's heavy soul arrow. Uh, the heavy soul arrow, more than likely, if you got down here immediately, you won't be able to afford it. Uh, but, uh, the Heavy Soul Arrow is a more powerful version of Soul Arrow. It's like two levels up. So, uh, there's there's four different types of Soul Arrows. Um, this is, the Heavy Soul Arrow is the third most powerful one. Uh, um, or second most powerful one, depending on which direction you're going. It's, it's the second to most powerful. Um, that's why it's so... Part of the reason why it's so expensive. Um, and then there's... Uh, make sure you use your D-pad instead of the... Uh, the control stick to select these things. Um, and then there's the regular soul arrow. So for now, I'm just going to buy the regular soul arrow. And once I equip this, I'll be able to have... Uh, once I equip this, I'll be able to have... 60 soul arrows instead of just 30. That's gonna last a long time. And so you can see, uh, if you go to your inventory, you can see the two soul arrows. I can't equip these until I get to a bonfire. Once I get to a bonfire, I'll equip my second set of soul arrows, and then I'll have 60 soul arrows instead of 30, which will be awesome. But now, we are going to go get that sweet mage armor, uh, the new catalyst, and uh, there's also another spell that we can get as well. Now, uh, if you already know how to do this, you can just skip over this part of the video, and basically that's the end. After after we do that, we're going to equip the other spell, and then uh, we'll be done. But uh, uh, if you don't know how to do it, follow me, and I'll show you exactly what that stuff is. This is why you need the master key. You need the master key to open this door. So once you get here, you'll get to the Valley of Drakes. You're gonna go across this bridge. You need to be careful. If you fall down, you'll die. Now. I'm gonna start going. Now in this area, the enemies are very powerful. Don't try to fight them or you'll die. Um, once we get through here, we're going to try to sprint across as much as you can and try to swerve around those big guys. Sprint as fast as you can. It's important that you keep running because they will chase you. They're not very fast, but they'll chase you. 
Now there's also a chest right here. If you're feeling a little ambitious, you can open that chest and then climb down the... Whoops. I got hit. Climb down the stairs. Make sure you drink from your Estus flask if you need to do that. Climb down these stairs. Once you're at the top of stairs, you can press the B button to quickly slide down. You don't have to climb all the way down. Just quick press the B button to quickly slide down the... Oh, damn it. These guys are... These guys are impossible. Okay. Run as fast as you can down here. Slide down the other set of stairs. Run past this guy. Oh my god, man. These guys are relentless. Get over this tree branches as much as you can. You may have to knock this guy off the edge. Uh, if you have your dagger equipped, you can knock him off with your dagger. <coughs> um, but you may have to knock that guy off the edge. Now, you'll be able to pillage these corpses. Uh, pillage them as fast as you can, because those guys are still chasing you. And then open the chest. Sorcery remedy. Once you get those things, get back to civilization as soon as possible. Go to browse items, scroll all the way down to get to your homeward bone, and then use it. Alright, now that you're back, you can equip your things. Uh, uh, go to each piece, head. You can choose Mask of the Sealer, Sorcerer Cloak, Crimson Gloves. Actually, the Sorcerer Gauntlets are better than the Crimson Gloves, so I'll just keep those on. Uh, crimson Weights Cloth is obviously better. And there you go. Now, you will notice that this, these things are actually kind of heavy, these clothes. If you try to roll, your roll isn't nearly as fast as it used to be. That's because you're reaching the limit of your max equip load. Uh, you don't really have, uh, <laughs> you're, you're rolling very slowly, and we're gonna have to fix that. So, what we're gonna have to do is we're going to have to fight Havel the Rock. Now... If you're thinking, how in the heck are you going to fight half of the rock like this? Trust me. I have a <laughs> foolproof plan of how you don't have to be a really high level character to fight him. I can fight him just like this. Um, but until I, I get those other things, I'm just going to equip some of my gear and then uh, unequip some of my gear and then I can go back to that. Also, you also got a new catalyst. Go back to your right hand and equip the tin banishment catalyst. It says insufficient strength to wield with one hand. We're going to have to put a point in strength. Rest at your bonfire. I may have to use one of my solo things. Okay. Rest at your bonfire, level up, and put one point in strength. That's all you need to wear this equipment. One point. And there it is. Now you can use the Ten Banishment Catalyst. You can use this catalyst both to fire soul arrows, and you can use it as a very nice melee weapon. It kills enemies in one hit. Just press the right trigger and... Bam! It's... It attacks like that. It kills almost every enemy in one hit. So you don't have to, uh, you don't have to worry. So if an enemy walks up, runs up to you, you can simply switch between your Sorcerer and your, uh, Tin Banishment. Notice that your Sorcerer Catalyst, um, does more damage with spells than the Tin Banishment. The Tin Banishment, uh, does a little bit less spell damage, but it does a lot more melee damage. 
Oh, and also don't forget to attune your your new soul arrow that you got. So basically what you have to do, you have to go to the attune magic option. And then uh, you go to one of your empty slots. Select it and then select soul arrow. So now I have two soul arrows summoned at the same time. Like that. You could also do this with the remedy spell, but uh, I don't have enough stats. I need one more point in intelligence in order to use this spell. So I'll just remove that for now. I don't really need it right now anyway, so. There you go, now I have 60 soul arrows. Um, run around, um, try out your new stuff, your new weapons, uh, go up these uh, stairs right here and try out how your new how your new things work. Get used to switching between the sorcerer and the ten vanishment catalyst. And uh, remember to always uh, lock on to enemies before you fire. Like that. And uh, get used to it. Um, you can practice, see how well this works out for you, practice with this, and then rest back at the bonfire to make all these enemies respawn, and, and, uh, build up your, uh, build up your experience points, and then you can go back down and buy that other spell. So, uh, whenever you're ready, watch your other video and meet me back at Firelink Shrine. So thank you very much for watching.